Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Fisher Park Neighborhood Association um, uh, general meeting. We are so glad you are here. So I want to introduce myself and my husband. Uh, I'm Nancy Collins, and this is my husband, Rick Collins. We're the co-presidents of the Neighborhood Association. Um, we live on the corner of uh, West Park and Acacia. Uh, gray house, big white fence around the backyard. So if you're ever walking your dog or want to come by, please feel free to stop and say hi because we'd love to to meet you all in person. Um, we're gonna we've got a lot to cover tonight, um, and we've got some city staff that have have uh, graciously decided that they would come on and make a couple presentations about some some things. And we're here to uh, have some general discussion as well, and um, you know answer a few questions. But we are very very happy that you're here, and I think we're gonna go ahead and start a couple ground rules. We went ahead and muted everybody um, on the city's end uh, to start. So if you want to uh, say something or ask a question, you can, I, Alyssa, are we set up so they can virtually raise their hand or should they just raise their hand? Okay, you can virtually raise your hand through the Zoom app, okay? And we're gonna ask you to remain on mute except for any kind of questions and answers or open discussion questions because that, that way it'll just flow smoother. Um, city staff is giving up their personal time to be here and we appreciate that mm. and we wanna honor that for them. So. Um, if you wouldn't, if you would mind, and you know, um, if you're not on video, um, we'd love to see you. We'd like to, we'd love to put a face to a name. So um, we'd love to go ahead and um, see who you are. And um, like I said, you know, get a face to a name. Um, there's two ways to participate in the meeting. You can uh, ask a question in the chat box, or you can. There's the raise your hand feature, like I said. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the. Um, the, the agenda. Um, so I'm Nancy Collins. This is my husband, Rick Collins. We're the co-presidents. And just so you know, we came on the Fisher Park board about a year ago because we wanted to be the party planners. <laughs> that was that was the whole thing. We thought, well, we want to do some fun things in the neighborhood. And then unfortunately, you know, COVID hit and we've not been able to do as many events as we'd like, but, you know, hopefully we might have some more down, down the road. We'll see. Um, uh, the rest of our board members that are on here, um, I would like to introduce Ryan Murphy. He's our communications guy. Ryan is amazing. And everything you read and see that comes out of Jack, out of the association is for him. And so you need to give him a big attaboy and buy him a Starbucks card because he probably works harder than everybody on this board, including myself and Rick. And then we have uh, Les Hall, who is our treasurer. And Les keeps, uh, keeps us in line financially and, and reprimands us if we spend too much money. And, <laughs> and uh, he does a really good job of keeping, keeping the budget tight. Um, we have Paul Sanford and Salome uh, Kingston, and they are both members at large. So what we try to do in our neighborhood, since our neighborhood is pretty diverse, we have three distinct sections in our neighborhood. Um, and so we, we have members at large from each section of the neighborhood. Ryan is also technically a, a member at large in his, his part of the woods. And um, our vice president, Marcella, um, I don't see her on as yet. She's been having some issues with a family member that has COVID, so she might not be able to join us tonight. But um, that's us. Uh, if you see us out and about, you see us walking our dogs or you know riding our bikes or talking to other neighbors, please feel free to stop and introduce yourselves personally at socially distance, of course, six, six feet apart, um, because we'd love to meet you all personally and we're really glad you're here. So from that, let's go ahead and turn it over to Les Hall, who's going to give us a real quick treasurer's report. Oh, Nancy, um, sorry to interrupt, but before you start, do you want Daisy Perez to make the uh, oh. introductions of city staff? I that was actually going to be next on the on the agenda, but sure, that'd be great. Daisy, if you would be so kind as to introduce the city staff that's participating, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, nice to virtually see and meet everyone. My name is Daisy Perez. I'm the assistant, uh, assistant to the city manager um, for the city of Santa Ana, and there's a couple of um, staff members on this call uh, with me. Um, so first, I'd like to introduce the... Um, Parks and Recreation uh, Executive Director, Lisa Rudloff. Lisa is amazing. Um, she's been with the city for a few years. And then we have Ron Ono. He's been with the city over 50 years. Um, so this is Ron. He is our parks guru, um, but I think his official title is a uh, admin services manager. 
And then we have Alyssa, which most of you know, um, she's with our neighborhood initiatives team. And um, we also have our new uh, council member for Ward 3, which is the ward where you all reside, um, Councilwoman Jesse Lopez. Thank you guys so much for participating and for being here. We're excited to meet you more um, and hear a little bit more from each of you. Um, so we'll go ahead. Like I said, I, get, I went through the call to order. I went through the ground rules. So Les, if you would like to give us a quick treasurer's report. Um, well, we are. I think I'm ready. Are you guys, okay, Les Hall, I'm the treasurer. And first I wanna say just a couple of things about contributions. Um, we really appreciate contributions to the association. That's what keeps us going. And the newsletter says how to do that. Um, check or PayPal. Cash is a little harder now. We don't really have events, um, but those are really appreciated. The other part is our bylaws say that our, just to let you know, um, donations are voluntary, but we appreciate them, but they're also confidential. Um, we're updating the bylaws, but we're keeping that. Um, um, so 2020, kind of a yeah, tough year. Um, our biggest um, income source is Open Garden Day. That didn't happen last year. It may not happen next year, this year. We're still not sure. Um, so potential issue. Last year, we didn't spend a lot, um, but we still spent a little more than came in. So let me give you some exact figures. On January 1st, 2020, we had $5,536. And 34 cents in the bank. December 31st, last year, we had $5,073 exactly in the bank. Um, so, um, again, another pitch to contribute. Um, we, we're doing okay with our bank account, but contributions are what keeps things going. Um, um, as of right now, we have $5,141.74 in the bank. Um, we don't know what contributions are coming in. Um, just to let you know in context, a big piece of that was when Concert in the Park closed. We got two or three thousand dollars when they split up uh, the money from the concert. We also had Open Garden Day, which we get a lot each year, and that didn't happen last year. Um, we hope it's gonna happen. Um, so again, um, we don't know what's happening. Um, please make a contribution. We really appreciate that. It makes everyone part of the Neighborhood Association. Um, we'll spend your money carefully. Um, and that's it for the treasure. And Great. any questions, I guess we come later if we do that. Yeah, thank you, Les, appreciate that. Um, okay, so the next thing that we have on our agenda, um, we actually have an open position um, on our board. And uh, we had someone that was filling the secretary position and the secretary, pretty much all you have to do is just take, take the minutes, take the notes from the board meetings and the general meetings and the minutes and, and, uh, and then you upload them to the Google Drive that Ryan has created. So it's really not difficult. Uh, so if anybody is interested in doing that, um, there's, you know, we're not going to take your firstborn kid or <laughs> anything like that. We just really could use some extra help on the board. We're always looking for extra hands on the board to help us out and, and um, you know, be available to the neighbors. So if anybody is interested in doing that, please reach out to one of us on the board and we would be happy to speak with you about that. It is a non-paid position. It's a volunteer position, of course, but we'd love to have you. And um, if I do say so myself, our board is really strong and we have a pretty good time in our board meetings, even though they're virtual. So if you are interested in being part of the board and it's, it's a very minimal job, but we sure could use some help, then please reach out to either myself and Rick or Ryan or anybody else on the board because we would love to have you. Okay. Um, okay. So the next thing, we had a pretty fun event um, and we did a couple things in December. But one of the main things that we did was really fun was that we had a, uh, a, it was a photo scavenger hunt that we did of uh, all, the, all the lights, all the Christmas lights and Christmas decorations. So we had categories and we had, you know, we had a little scavenger hunt and you could just go with your family and walk around and, you know, find the 
the house with the most reindeer and find this kind of thing and you know the funniest looking Santa and that kind of thing and uh, post the pictures you know and answer the questions and you know it was our first time doing it and we thought well what the heck we can't we usually have a big Christmas party but we couldn't do that this year so we thought well we'll do that and see if we can't get you know it's a, it's a really good way walk around see the Christmas lights or drive around it's a really good way to you know meet some other neighbors and and just kind of have a nice evening with your family. And we actually had three people. We had a lot of people that participated, but we had three people that got all the categories, you know, most of the categories right and really participated and uploaded a lot of pictures. So these three people will be getting a Starbucks gift card. So there you go um, from the board. And we will, uh, we will go ahead and award that to you sometime this week. And the three people that, that participated to the point of winning are Teresa Lee, Doreen Robinson and Carla Martin. So it gives yourselves a hand. You guys had a great time. It was just supposed to be kind of a fun way to engage with the neighborhood. Even if you didn't want to talk to neighbors, you could kind of drive around. And, you know, we had a lot of people that, that commented on the Facebook page. This is really fun. So thanks for doing this. So uh, Teresa Lee, Doreen Robinson and Carla Martin, congratulations and enjoy your Starbucks. <laughs> so. Um, so we really appreciate everybody that um, that participated in that. It was kind of a, it was a really kind of a fun event, and it was you know kind of a just get out and see your neighbors. It was really fun. So from that, um, I, I wanted to move on to we have some uh, city staff and we have some guest speakers decorating tonight. Contest. Oh oh oh! I forgot the decorating contest. I forgot the decorating contest. Sorry about that. Um, we also had, sorry, it wasn't, it wasn't on the agenda, so I forgot to see it. It is now. It is now. So we actually had a, a decorating contest, and we had uh, the board members drove around, and we, we voted on, you know, whose house was the best decorated, and what was the categories, and what was the criteria. And the winner of the uh, best decorated uh, Christmas, best Christmas decorated house in Fisher Park was uh, uh, Tim Winger and Alex Fish and they live uh, on Jonquil. And so congratulations to you guys. You guys won a $25 Amazon card. So that was kind of a fun thing too. So hopefully- We already gave it to we them. We already gave it to them. I we think, have proof. We and they've probably picture. already spent it. Alex is already on a little, I don't know if Alex is still on, but if he is, uh, but we are, you know, that was also kind of a really fun thing. We'll probably do that again next year as well because it's pretty low impact and it was, it was fun. It was really fun to do that. So yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cause I totally blew by that. So let's talk. Uh, we've got some guest speakers. And so uh, councilwoman Lopez, would you like to introduce yourself and give us a little background on you and welcome to Jack Fisher park. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, well, my name is Jesse Lopez. For those that don't know, I am born and raised in the city of Santa Ana and I attended our public schools. And I just want to thank you folks for allowing me to be here tonight and giving me the opportunity to listen to all of you. Um, you know, my mom used to work at Hoover, which isn't that far off from Fisher Park. And growing up, I used to get made fun of. I They would tease me a lot because she, she worked at school and people would say that she would give me preferential treatment. Um, so, you know, being in Fisher Park and Floral Park and visiting, visiting the parks there, it's been part of my childhood. And, um, and, and even though I don't live in those communities, uh, they have, they bring back a lot of beautiful memories for me. Um, and, and I do wanna see these neighborhoods flourish. Uh, and today I actually went on a ride along with Mr. Katz. He was gracious enough to invite me and my chief of staff. Um, and he took us around in his golf cart. And, and again, it brought a lot, it brought back a lot of memories. And I do understand the beauty of our neighborhoods and the importance of protecting them and, and helping them revitalize the image of our city. And so I'm here to, as I said, to listen and to build working relationships with you folks so that whatever it is that we need um, that, that are that our concerns are addressed in a timely manner and um, that we have someone that that is listened and open to having a conversation. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thanks for jumping in. Um, does anybody have any questions for um, I mean, we, can, we can probably take a second here just to say hi. And does anybody have any questions for Councilwoman Lopez? If not, we'll save those for open discussion. 
Okay, well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. I, I, I would just like to hear what, what our count, what council Woman Lopez's primary focus is for, you know, the, for, for the next couple of years, what you, what you see our challenges are, how we can enhance and work with you um, as an association to, you know, really make this, this ward successful or improve. Mm, thank you. And thank you for welcoming me into your meeting. Um, right now, the biggest priority for, for, for me and for a lot of well, I'm going to speak for myself is is COVID and finding and bringing vaccinations to the city for our families. Um, that's the number one priority to make sure that we are able to provide some sort of um, to alleviate the the issue that we are facing here in terms of healthcare and access to healthcare because not everybody has it. Um, and also, you know, taking the budget uh, into consideration and planning for, for, for what we're gonna, the decisions that we're gonna be faced with. And um, in terms of the neighborhoods, you know, I am aware that our communities have seen for a really long time now an increase in people and in homelessness. And so I, you know, keeping it in the context of Fisher Park, um, you know, there. I know that there are worries about the encampments in in the creek and what the city is doing and how we're working with the homeowners there, um, and what the process is and what the progress has been, and so that is my priority um, to work with you all, with you folks here in Fisher Park to make sure that that the wishes of the homeowners that um, that reside here are respected um, in terms of what they wanna see at the creek, but also to continue to work with the city and our quality of life team, which I think has done a really great job in uh, making sure that, that there aren't any encampments there and working with the county because I know that it, there's homeowners there and then there's city property there and um, there's county property there as well. And so um, it gets really confusing and agencies just want to point at each other and say, this is your problem, this is your problem. And we've done enough of that. And it's time that um, we really take lead at this point in time. And um, I, I'm, I'm here to be a vessel um, and to, to be the connection to City Hall to say, this is what people want to see and um, how we can keep families safe. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, welcome. I'm glad that we have you as a native and somebody who knows it so well on, on representing us. Thanks very much. Thank Let you. us know how we can help. Thank and you. Councilwoman, I want to encourage you to reach out to myself and any, any of our board members at any time. Um, we're always here to, to, to you know, cooperate with you and with the city. And you know, we love your involvement. So thank you very much for that input. But please feel free to You've got my phone number, please feel free to, you know, write, call, text, whatever you need to do if you have a question or any thoughts or, or anything that we could be doing as a neighborhood to be a little more proactive. Um, we would love to hear that. So thank you very, very much for, for being here. Thank you and thank you for offering your support. I will definitely take you up on that. Um, okay. It's always great for, for not just the council members, but our, our city staff to hear directly from you as well. Right, right. You know, the, the, more, the more we do, the more we'll do, right? Yes. So thank you so much. Um, and I really appreciate that. So, um, okay. So uh, Lisa Rudloff, are you available to talk a little bit about um, uh, what's going on with the park? And we have some uh, questions, you know, we, we have a little, uh, a little bit of feedback, I think from our end as well, but um, we would love to hear what you have to say. Absolutely. Uh, well, hi everyone. My name is Lisa Rudloff. Uh, I'm the executive director of the Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Agency. And with me is Ron Ono. If I can point to him. There he is right there. <laughs> um, he's our administrative services manager. He he's in the, uh, works in the Parks and Facilities Division, takes care of the parks, and he's going to give a little presentation on uh, what's been happening at Fisher Park and what's about to happen in the future. Great. But I am happy. I connected with Nancy uh, via Jesse, or uh, Council Member Lopez, pardon me. Um, and uh, we, uh, I, she's kind of like a person that lives under a rock. She does, she's not very energetic. She doesn't like to do anything, but we had a conversation and we hit it off and, and she, uh, and I just wish to uh, provide my support to all of you in Fisher Park and wanted to uh, meet all of you and let you know that in Parks and Recreation where the past two years, I've been with the city of uh, Santa Ana the past two years. 
And so we've been trying to um, improve our park system, uh, our park amenities. And, um, you know, we, we think that the park should be safe, they should be clean, uh, and they should be activated. Uh, the pandemic doesn't help, I understand that, but uh, we need to get to a place where people um, feel that way when they go to the park. They deserve it. It's been neglected, in my opinion, for, for a lot of years. And so um, Ron Ono is um, the person who's trying to help uh, improve our parks right now. We take every uh, uh, budget item or budget area we can find to fix things in our parks. That's been our focus. Uh, the general fund has never funded a capital improvement project. It's typically funded out of grants um, or um, you know, cell tower monies. And so it's very hard to get uh, capital improvement projects done. Um, this past year, I wanna tell you that we applied for about $18 million of grant funding and we received about $8 million. So um, to Ron and his staff and all of our staff are writing those grants. Um, we're able to provide two new parks to Santa Ana, improvements to Santiago Park upcoming, and Ron will talk about that, uh, and other things uh, within our system. So um, I'm here to help support uh, you. And if you ever need anything, always feel free to reach out. You can email um, or um, email is probably the best way uh, um, and, or get my phone number from Nancy and text me. But um, I'd like to introduce Ron Ono and he's gonna give a little presentation. I'm, I'm hoping he can share his screen. Uh, if not, if you can maybe make adjustments to that. And uh, I think Daisy, are you, there we go. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for inviting us to your neighborhood association meeting. Um, it's been a long time coming. I remember some of you when we actually volunteered to build the uh, playground equipment. I think Nancy and, and uh, your husband were there. So great, great opportunity to get in, getting together. Uh, I've, I prepared this presentation based on Fisher Park, but we can talk about other park improvements if you'd like to, but I've identified the recent and future improvements at Fisher Park. Uh, next page. But before we go into that, um, I'd like to go over our general operational improvements so that you have a full understanding of our staffing level and, and how we're handling our, uh, our park improvements and uh, maintenance contracts and custodial contracts. For a long time, we have suffered in funding, uh, but just recently within the last year or two, thanks to Lisa, uh, we were able to hire five park, inspe park inspectors. Um, we only had one inspector and, and two supervisors, but now we have five inspectors. Actually, we have a total of six inspectors because one has already been with us for a long period of time. Two of the five inspectors are actually tree uh, arborists, um, which really has helped us in inspecting our trees, our maintenance of our trees, identify whether a tree should be removed or, or saved. So they have helped tremendously as along with uh, West Coast Arborist, who is another tree contractor that we, we contract with. Um, the, the, the six inspectors are actually divided up in the North, three in the North division, three in the South division. And the, and the division is separated by first street. So, any, so there's three inspectors and, an, and a supervisor north of first and a similar three inspectors and a supervisor south of first. Uh, the, the inspectors are actually now going through a training process where they're taking exams to become qualified playground safety uh, certification inspectors. So not only will we have tree arborists, but we'll have inspectors that are trained to inspect our playground equipment so they, to ensure that they are safe uh, for public use. Uh, their, basic, uh, their basic duties are to open restrooms and inspect the custodial contracts to make sure that they are doing what is specified. They also inspect our park landscape maintenance contracts to ensure that, that our maintenance contractors uh, perform their duties as specified, picking up trash daily, mowing the turf uh, on a weekly basis, fertilizing, pruning trees, uh, ball field maintenance, and so forth. 
as they as they travel through the parks, they also uh, identify repairs that's needed and report that to our general maintenance staff so that they can go out and, and make those repairs on a timely manner. The custodial contract cleans the restrooms twice per day. And the reason for that is in the, they clean it first thing in the morning so that they're ready for public use, the joggers, the, the walkers, the public use in early in the morning. And the second cleaning is around three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, mainly for our sports leagues. So ensure that the restrooms are clean for their operation and their programs. Uh, the uh, <laughs> tree maintenance contracts also their, their funding has been increased. Again, thanks to Lisa, we've increased our funding to our tree maintenance contracts by about $250,000. In the past, we've only had $50,000 to maintain all the trees in our park system. Uh, that's so basically we were just had enough money to take care of uh, hazardous trees and, and picking up limbs uh, from falling trees. Uh, the, as Lisa indicated, the city is systematically making improvements as funds are available. The funds that we, we normally tap into are grant funding, uh, park A and D monies, which is our park development fees, CDBG, uh, cannabis money, which is used for youth programs and youth improvements, and cell tower. As Lisa indicated, we, we don't get uh, general fund monies for capital improvements. We do get general fund monies for our park uh, operation, our operational costs. Uh, next page. On the recent park improvements that we made, some of you have uh, already recognized them. Uh, in fact, uh, when we were invited to the meeting, it was already identified some of these things that we have removed some dead trees in Fisher Park. Uh, we've also uh, removed the old tool shed. And the picture to the right of the screen is the removal of the tool shed and some of the tree locations. We also installed a lighted flagpole you see on the bottom of the screen. Yes, thank you. We also installed a new irrigation controller on the okay. center screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've made repairs to the, so the creek fencing, and we've also replaced the wood fiber in the playground about yeah. a year ago. It probably needs another replacement, but the, the picture you see was about a year ago when we replaced the wood fiber uh, in, in the Fisher Park. Uh, next slide. On future park improvements, uh, we're planning on improving the irrigation system around the cannon that was relocated to the front of the park uh, and the area that the, uh, I think the Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts uh, did right behind the cannon. So we're gonna re renovate that irrigation system. Uh, we're also gonna re-landscape the entire area uh, by the cannon and also by the tool shed uh, that was removed. Good. We're also installing new park regulation signs in all our parks system, uh, we'll install a new one, uh, both in English and Spanish uh, in all our sites. Fisher Park will get one of our paired uh, new park rules and regulation signs. Uh, we are in the process of now, of, now of um, uh, acquiring those signs. The signs have already been designed and we're getting a contract to, to uh, prepare the artwork and the, and the actual signage and then staff will get it installed. Uh, next slide. The other uh, future improvement that we're proposing is the removal of existing restroom. As you know, the existing restroom has been there for a long time. This really is an, is an awkward location. It's behind the log cabin. It's kind of a safety issue. It's difficult to see. Uh, we need to identify funding for this. We don't have the monies yet. We estimated the cost to be around $300,000. Uh, because we don't have the funding, we don't have a schedule on this improvement, but we've, we started the design work to do a prefab, and the, which is uh, the picture to the right. And it's me, uh, it was designed to match the log cabin appearance. Uh, location of this, uh, this uh, restroom hasn't been identified because we don't wanna block visibility to the park, so we still need to identify a proper location. It'd probably be close to where the existing one is because all our utility lines are there. Okay. Uh, next slide. 
The other thing that we're doing uh, is preparing a park master plan. Uh, the city has never had a park master plan. We have had a um, needs assessment study done about 30 years ago, but uh, we need to do a new park master plan to identify areas that are short of park sites. As you know, we are park poor and we need to improve those areas. Um, we prepared a request for proposal. We, update, we, we got six consultants submitting proposals. We were able to analyze those uh, applications and we selected MIG, MIG Inc. consultant. The agreement was approved in December to prepare the master plan. The schedule that you identify is, a, is an approximate schedule that we plan on doing. Uh, it's, it's first to start obtaining uh, existing data to do an inventory and analysis, uh, identify our park needs and our park deficiency areas. That process will take around three months. The next process, the next phase would be evaluating and forecasting uh, park needs and programs. This is where we'll get community input uh, we'll, we'll notify all the neighborhood associations uh, when this process will be handled. A uh, consultant will be on board. They'll, they'll handle us through that community input process. And this, this process will take around three months. Uh, from that, we'll get the recommendations and prioritizations. That's another three-month process. The consultant will finalize the documents. Uh, to present it to the Board of Recreation and Parks and the City Council for adoption. And that process, because of getting on the agenda and, 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 and uh, 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 letting the council members know and the board members know what, what is in the meat of the document, that process is going to take around four months. So what I've indicated, uh, it'll probably take about 12 months to get all this uh, whole park master plan process completed. Uh, once completed though, the master plan will provide us a roadmap on where future parks should be developed. It'll identify the sizes of those parks. It will identify facility needs. It'll identify programs that the community would like to have. It'll identify uh, capital costs, uh, deferred maintenance needs. As you know, as we develop these new sites, we also need to identify funding to operate and maintain these, uh, these new sites as well as the existing sites. So uh, the consultant will help us identify those, those costs and staff needs uh, to fully uh, develop the park master plan uh, and improvements. As I indicated earlier, the community will be fully involved in this process uh, to help us complete this master plan that will benef benefit the city of Santa Ana. <clears throat> With that, that concludes my presentation. Next slide, uh, I'm open for any questions that you may have. Yeah, um, just so I can add on a little bit to the, um, you, can, you can close the screen, Daisy, no worries. I uh, just wanna add on to the Parks Master Plan, although it sounds, oh wow, it's this document, how boring. It really is gonna help the city of Santa Ana when I'm not there, when Ron is not there, when you all are not there. At least it's a plan that the community has input in and, um, we can create a system, a park system. Um, they go in and they rate all of our amenities in the park. We ask the community, what kind of amenities do you want in your park? Uh, and so then we take these things to um, the city council when it's budget time, uh, and then they decide if they're going to fund these, these type of things. We're still apply for grants and things of that nature, but it's gonna give us this great um, data that we can go to the council with and I'm not going to say oh, this is what I think we need. I can say this is what the community wants, and this is the this is the plan that you adopted. Uh, and here are the facts, and here is the information. And so it helps them make an informed decision. So, um, so we're looking forward to that. We will keep you posted on the timeline and the community input. So everybody is involved. We'll have stakeholder uh, interviews and and things of that nature. We're we're trying to come up with creative ways to engaged since the pandemic. I mean, some people don't like Zoom, you know, so we're gonna have to figure out, um, at one city they had a, um, what did he say, Ron? A drive-through um, uh, drive meeting. I, I don't know, 
is that's probably a disaster. But anyway, we'll think of something. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Ron, for that. And we'd be happy to answer any, any questions you may have. Yes, I have a question, Jim Farley. Hi. One of the nice parks, it's small in our area, is where <clears throat> the City Drive intersects Memory Lane slash Garden Grove Boulevard. But it doesn't get much use. It's got some of the nicest equipment and stuff around, but there's no parking for anybody. Right. And with small children, they would have to, from our area, would have to cross Bristol. And then mm -hmm. you get all the traffic on uh, Garden Grove Boulevard slash Memory Lane. So what are there any plans to provide parking for use of that park? Uh, you know what, that will be evaluated uh, during this process and, and could be a recommendation uh, out of this process. Um, so exactly, those type of evaluations and uh, observations, they'll meticulously go through all of our park system. Uh, along with Ron, who's been here, has the experience uh, and um, community input that he has, has received. Uh, and, um, and they'll be taking uh, tours of our parks and evaluating them. Let me see if I can add to that too, Jim. Um, when we first developed that park, um, we actually wanted the entire parcel. Uh, I think the mayor also wanted the entire parcel uh, that included the housing uh, development next door. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we weren't able to get it. We, if we were able to get that, uh, we could provide the sufficient parking. Since we were not able to get the entire parcel, I own a little sliver of it. The park was designed mainly for access from the bike trail. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we put in a, if we put in a parking lot, it would have eaten up almost half or more than half of that park site. Uh, so we said, you know, let's address it from a bike, bike access uh, process. And if anyone would like to visit that park, they can actually drive down and park at Edna Park, which is just south of that park site, and walk up the bike trail to utilize that, that site. But it was mainly focused yeah. on addressing the uh, usage from the bike trail. It's where people would bicycle down the Santa Ana River, stop, rest. Uh, there, not, normally, there'd be a family riding down so the kids can get off their bike, play on the playground equipment. Uh, we had a we had a station there that you can fill up. It doesn't get much use. Water bottle. Tire, uh, air with, with air, um, and uh, and then it was also designed so that the the development the the uh, the housing development uh, next door, uh, which is somewhat like a, a retirement almost uh, needs type of. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, would have their family visit. So as their grandkids, their family visit, they would have a means to utilize that park sites from that perspective. So it was a combination of a lot of things. And when the park was designed, unfortunately, we would have, we would have liked to have put in that parking lot, but unfortunately we were unable to do that. I hope that answered your question, Jim. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate the information. Okay, I have a question. So at currently at Jack Fisher Park, uh, when we, um, you know, our, we try, as a, our family, we try to go over there at least one time a week and just kind of walk through the park and see what's happening. So normal maintenance stuff, you know, um, we just use the My Santa Ana app to let you guys know if something's, you know, broken or, or needs repair or if there's a, you know, a major issue. Is that probably the easiest way? Because that's yeah. not... That's just regular maintenance, right? That's the easiest way to do it. Hopefully, um, you don't have to do it. And hopefully, my staff would catch it before you mm -hmm. can. But sometimes, uh, we'll get two or three apps on the same items. Right. So even if you do get an app, I mean, you, you, that's the best way to submit it. We look at it every morning, uh, and we try to address it right away with staff. If they can't catch it that day, they'll, they'll at least try to get it within the week or at least three days and get it taken care of. Uh, some of the things like uh, you may see a broken um, uh, security light. That may take a little longer because we've got to order a light fixture and, and, and wait for that and get it installed. But something simple like re removing a um, uh, uh, shopping cart or mm -hmm. broken sprinkler head, we'll take care of it right away. Okay, well, I want to go on record right now and thank you for uh, stepping up and replacing the flagpole. 
Oh. Um, so that we, you know, when we had our Veterans Day event, that kind of was like a, gosh, why don't we do something for the veterans? We have a park named after a famous World War II veteran. Why aren't we doing something <laughs> for the veterans? And so that kind of was a joint effort between uh, Jack Fisher Park and Floral Park Association. And, um, you know, I reached out to Scott and said, you know, the flagpole, we need to get, a, if, if, you have a, if you have a flag at nighttime, protocol says you have to have it lit. That's and correct. We appreciate, the lighting is not particularly intense, but it is legally lit. So that's great. So we, we I just want to personally thank you for, um, I talked to the, the staff members that were there working in there. Every time I saw somebody working over there, I made it a point to stop my car or walk over and thank them. And you guys did a great job. And we really, really appreciated your being so responsive in that because that Veterans Day event was very well attended, <laughs> way better than we actually told the city it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. We, it was the more programs you have, the better off we are in, in keeping the park safe. Yeah. And so, right. uh, you know, with COVID, we understand it's really difficult to have any kind of neighborhood programs there. But, you know, we're always kind of on the on the uh, on the search for things that we could do and keep everybody safe and socially distance and and that kind of thing. And the Veterans Day event was was uh, way more successful than we thought it would than I thought it would be. <laughs> but thank you very I just want to I'm going to personally thank you um, for stepping up and replacing that flagpole because it really it's uh, made a huge difference. So thank you very much. But well, thank question, you. You know, if there's a because I noticed like and, and I realize that this is not a park issue, but in front of Jack Fisher Park, there's a sidewalk that and I realize that's a that's a city issue, not a park issue, but it's huge. It's just demolished. There's a there's a couple of places in the sidewalk that it's not even safe to like walk your dog so that's the kind of thing and I and when I walk through the park I see stuff and I'm like yeah this probably had a, there, there used to be I'm not sure if there is anymore there used to be a couple of broken uh, tables you know the cement tables and they were they were in really bad shape and not safe because they were sharp and they had rebar sticking out of them so that kind of thing we just use the app right and just correct you know, just, correct correct <laughs> Well, we appreciate, you know, um, our neighborhood association is very, very interested in, in the park and, and getting it, you know, fixed up as best we can so that we can use it. You know, um, our board has a lot of really fun plans. When, when COVID finishes up, we've got some great plans that we'd like to start doing things there to get more families involved in the park. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, if there's no questions, oh, I have a question, Carla. Yeah. So when you were talking about the park's master plan, what is like the time for that? Is that a five-year plan, a ten-year? Uh, it's a ten-year plan. Ten-year. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I have a comment. Uh, so I um, grew up in Fisher Park uh, on Park Lane and um, love the neighborhood. Um, have vis I visit Jack Fisher Park probably once a week with my little one over here. So we are very thankful for the fundraising you did long ago to get the uh, play structure up and the landscaping that you're planning. Um, but I heard that um, there was some talk of the fire pit being considered for removal. Well, no, no, uh, what it, it's, it wasn't from us. Uh, I know that we have close the fire pit because of an incident or, or a situation that happened, but it was actually coming from uh, the community. So we've heard from uh, an individual that possibly removal and we've indicated to the individual, uh, you know, we, we don't want to uh, react to once one person. Uh, we would like to have a consensus of the neighborhood association and the community. If an item needs to be removed, uh, if you, we've got support and we'll, we'll look at it and address it. Well, I know I'm not gonna be the only one who speaks now. Um, I'm the second Russell on this call in case you <laughs> thought. Uh, but I just want to um, let you know that it's a very important part of my childhood. Um, my family has, been, uh, has had fires um, as a family at that park um, almost once a year at the very least. And we enjoy it very much. It's a part of the history of the neighborhood, I believe. Um, and I would love to know more um, from our, our resident historian here, but I believe it's part of the WPA um, part that, I think makes, you're right. that yeah. makes that park so unique. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no park that has features like that anywhere in San Juan. And one of my favorite things to do is actually invite um, play dates of my children um, to come. And we have such great joy at this very unique place in Santa Ana. And I would 
Um, I know my mother, Barbara, uh, who is obviously lived in this neighborhood much longer than I have, or uh, is going to speak to it as well, but um, we don't want to see that go. And um, so. so is, is there, a, when, when, you know, when you guys go through and you, and you, this gets addressed through the, uh, through the consultants, um, we actually love the fire pit as well, but it, it concerns me that it's not safe. You know, the rocks are loose, kids are climbing on it. Uh, it fills with water when it rains. So uh, that's my question is, is it possible that we could maybe renovate it and make it a little bit safer? Because it is, it does concern me when I see, when I see kids climbing on it and, and running around the edge and it's pretty deep drop down there. Um, it is a super cute fire pit and our association has actually used it a couple times as well at events. Um, it, it, so if, if there's a way to make it, you know, a little bit safer, that would be the, that would be the hot ticket. So. Yeah. Lisa, I, I have a question for you. Um, it, it seems like there's a catch 2022. Um, my understanding is, is we're not allowed to use it as a fire pit. Um, is there a prohibition against a fire pit? Uh, that, that seems to be it. I think that's one of the issues. Um, uh, if you can't use it as a fire pit, that takes away a big benefit. Um, I can see problems after 10, people having fires in the middle of the night, but I thought there was a prohibition on that. Is that, can you clarify that? Because if we could use it, it would be great. It's a usable fire pit. It needs to be cleaned up and made safer. But if it's not legal to use it as a fire pit, um, that's an issue. Um, I don't know, Ron, is it, is it not legal to use as fire? I mean, you, to me, you can use it as a fire pit. We just need to make sure it's maintained and safe for people. But um, what does the- Maybe I have a question. I, I think there are maybe permits that you need. It's a, it's a very complex process. Um, maybe it's mm. not prohibited, but it can't be used without a permit. Um, to me, yeah. And oh, you're, you're, is that the issue? It'll be safer if you made a reservation or a permit uh, to use the fire. But that way we know who's responsible uh, for that fire. Um, but, um, uh, you know, just to go out, the problem we had was kids going in there late at night or early morning mm -hmm. and doing a bonfire. And that was the issue. So, okay. So here's how I would like it to go in, in my world. Um, the fire pit should be just like a barbecue. If you're going to bring your family and have a picnic, you can barbecue, you can use a shade structure, you could use a fire pit. So we need to get there and we need to make it first of all safe. And we need to, we need to clear up our process on permitting, which we're trying to do right now. Um, so what does it mean to get a permit? Can you just go out there and have a family picnic? Can you use every amenity there? Do you need to reserve it? Uh, we need to do a better job at cleaning that up to make it easy for people uh, to utilize the amenities at that park. So uh, there is a past, a past practice, but um, the goal is to make it uh, usable for the community and, and we will certainly get there. So thank you for, for telling me that. I, I did not know. I can add one more comment since you both have joined us um, for this meeting um, that, uh, you know, I do not currently live in the Fisher Park neighborhood current now, uh, but I do because I have two children um, act, go to many parks across the city. And I just want to say when I heard this today, it alarmed me because this was so tied to my childhood and my memories of Santa Ana. But the other park we frequent most is Chepa's Park, and you've just removed the handball courts from there. And I just want to kind of as a resident of Santa Ana, a taxpayer, um, I just want to communicate that it's very distressing to see so many things, recreational things, especially during COVID when we are struggling so hard with children to find places for them to play, to see or to hear that things might be removed um, from right. our city. So. Yeah, great. Well, I appreciate everybody's comments. You know, it's, there's just so many, the, there's so many things that fire pit is absolutely adorable and we've used it as an association several times. If, if there's just a way we could figure out how to get the water out of it every time it rains and you know it rains and then it fills with water and then people throw their trash in there and that kind of thing that's that's not safe and then like I say every time I see kids climbing on it and you know half the rocks falling off I just you know it just scares me to death so if, yeah. if there's a way that we could make it safe that would be that would be the ultimate for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, we can do, oh sorry. 
sorry, Director Rudolph. Um, one of the observations that I made today while I was out there with Mr. Katz was that it doesn't have a drainage. So maybe starting right. with adding that, that way the water doesn't accumulate would be a good starting point. Um, sure. And Director Rudolph, I defer to you on that. Yeah, I was Absolutely. told by one of, the, one of the maintenance guys that we couldn't add a drain to that because there's no way to get it out to the street. But if there's a way they could figure that out and make that, and like I say, make it, a, you know, or maybe put a railing around it so we don't have kids, you know, riding their skateboards and tripping and falling. Mm -hmm. it, it's a pretty deep drop. It's like five or six feet. Yeah. So let us do, let us do uh, an assessment of that. If Ron can uh, have his staff do an assessment of what it would take to make it safe and accessible and uh, then he usually gets a price quote on that and then we'll go from there. So we'll, we'll take yeah, a great. look. Might I add something? Um, I'm actually a, uh, an architectural designer. I, I deal with site uh, issues, continue, including drainage quite a bit. Uh, there's passive drainage systems you can use, such as percolation, right. where you basically create a underground um, retention basin. Water filters in and then it goes back into the, uh, into the groundwater system. So great. there's possibilities, it just you know, costs money. Sure. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. We can, we can make an assessment. We can, you know, find out that we do this all the time. Okay. How much is it going to cost? <laughs> and then we'll see what we can do. And our, I know our neighborhood, we've spoken to several neighbors that would love to once, you know, once the COVID issue settles down and it's, and it's safe to do so, we have several neighbors that would love to participate in a, like a clean up the park day or a spruce up the park day, maybe adds a little bit of landscaping, you know, um, in front of the cabin, there's nothing. It's just dirt. And there's, there's a little flower bed there. It'd be nice to you know, plant some flowers. I did ask about a year ago, I said, can we at least pull the dead plants that are in front of the cabin? And they were nice enough to do that. Um, and uh, we've had a couple outdoor movie nights. They were so fun. You know, Once the city releases that again, we absolutely are gonna be on board with that. Uh, we had a jazz night there uh, about a year ago. That was really fun. We got one of the local jazz bands out and, and you know, we were able to pull power from the cabin and we had a jazz night there. That was really fun. We had a, one, of our, one of our best events that we had there was a year ago this last June um, for Father's Day weekend. We, we called it Pancakes in the Park with Dad. And uh, all the neighbors came and we rented a, a grill and we, a griddle and we did pancakes and sausage and coffee. And um, gosh, we had a bunch of people at that one, probably 150. Yeah, Got, you know, we brought games out for the kids. And, so our neighborhood is definitely interested in participating and keeping that park, you know, active and going. And even, you know, I know that, that once the city, you know, life gets back to normal, if it ever does, we would love to participate in a, in a spruce up the park day and maybe get some things done and kind of make it a little bit prettier than it already is. So Absolutely. Please, Great. please keep us in mind because we, you know, we definitely have the manpower to help. Excellent. Uh, Lisa and Ron, I would like to just say that as a resident in Fisher Park, I drive by it every day. Um, I've seen huge improvements over the past year um, in the park. It looks so much better. The grass was dead almost always until about a year ago. Um, I've seen plants cleaned up. I see security in there all the time. I do check the bathrooms because I just worry they were such a problem for drug, drugs and such for a long time. So I think what everybody's gone over here is really some good information, but I do want to make sure you know that I, I, the improvements have been remarkable. And I mean, for those of us that have lived in the neighborhood for 10 and 15 years, it looks better than it has in, in ages. And there's always upside. And I, I, pre, I think everybody brought up some good points, but I, I do want to let you know that I'm, I'm impressed with um, the management and the improvement over the past year and look forward to a bright future. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. All right. Thank okay, you. Uh, there's a question here from Barbara. Are there plans to replant or replace any? I didn't see what the rest of the questions were. Uh, are there, oops, where'd it go? Probably a landscaping question. So maybe when you guys do the, maybe when the consultant comes in, you know, like I say, there's, there's definitely, thanks for pulling the dead trees, by the way, Ron. Oh, not <laughs> a problem. It's a, it's, uh, I'm glad to do that. Um, and, and the Ucky Shed, I really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. That you know that shed removal really opened up the park side. It's really the visibility now is a lot better. Well, uh, you know, there was a lot of homeless that were kind of sleeping behind it and right. behind it, and it was all termite infested. And 
You know, I, I never did know what it was. And then I asked one of your city staff that was there on Veterans Day. I'm like, why do we even have this thing? Because <laughs> it's really, so thank you for that. That's a big deal. And for, for getting rid of the two dead trees, we appreciate that. No. So that's and going back to Barbara's uh, question, uh, she asked if the, um, if they're going to be replaced, uh, trees replaced in um, neighborhoods and, and parks. Uh, and we did have an increase in our, in our tree budget. Uh, it used to be 50,000, as Ron said, then we moved it to 250,000. He blasted through that in half the year. <laughs> but be it's because our system, our, tree, um, our trees need so much help. And so um, we, we're just, we'll continue to ask for poor, more funding to take care of our trees. Um, we need to, you know, trim up the skirts, keep them uh, safe for the community, make sure they're not diseased. And so um, that's our goal to do that. Thank you for the okay. question. Okay. Um, all right. So if there's no more questions about the park, let's go ahead and move to open discussion. Ryan, I'm not seeing all the questions. So can you... Yeah, um, there, there's asked a question about, and I saw a, par, a partial question about uh, riverbed access. Um, I didn't see what the whole question was. Yeah, so Mark, Mark um, said, any chance of gaining access to the riverbed via the park? Not sure if uh, our guest speakers on here can speak to that. Um, maybe you can help address that. Um, if you all remember, the park used to have a fence, only about a couple right. of feet high, open pipe rail fence. But because of all the homeless activity in the creek, uh, there was a request to actually install, I think, a six, six maybe eight foot high uh, fence that the county uses to prevent access into the creek. So that's what you see at Fisher Park right now, is that fence to block access. So to regain access to the creek, you would, we would almost need to address the homeless issue uh, in the creek itself. Um, before actually providing access, because you're going to contradict what uh, the, the city wanted to do is to prevent, or the neighborhood wanted to do, I say, to prevent access into the creek. Yeah, it was really bad until that. Yeah. Fence. It's 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 a lot. I mean, we still have, um, you know, homeless and and um, you know people that are struggling um, still in the park uh, every day. We see them, you know. Um, I mean, but at least they're not coming as much through the creek, they're coming up from the outside. So I think it's, I think it's cut way down. So, yeah, you know, there was, there was that creek fire in September that was really huge. And then what last summer, there was the, that one guy that was continually setting fire. Yeah, we had several fires, like eight or nine fires or something like that. 12 set, fires. 12 fires set yeah. in the creek bed. So, you know, that's another day's discussion. You know, there's so many. Right. If they, you know, if they could clean out some of the non-native trees down below, actually in the creek bed, not on the banks, but in the creek bed, that's where they're living and hiding. You know, if we could do something about that, I think that would make a big difference. But that, you know, that's another day's discussion. The city of Orange did a good job with that in in uh, uh, in Grijalva Park. In Grijalva Park, working with the Army Corps of Engineers. Army Corps of Engineers, and so so the city got the city of Orange got got the county to come in and clean out just the just the non-native trees that were in the middle of the creek bed um and then the the native trees you know they were left and and some of the trees on the banks were left but they cleaned out the big ones that were in the creek bed and then the army corps of engineers comes in about once every two months and just keeps them trimmed up and and you know keeps them cared for and they got they had a huge reduction in their homeless population and it's still pretty but it, they, and i realize that we have raise the trees up so you know, that they can't be hidden. we have different issues here because we have you know part of the people are you know part of it's owned by people and part of it's owned by the county but but the part that the city is responsible for if we could just get that you know just get that trimmed up and get the dead stuff out of there that would make a huge difference too i think yeah i, I don't know if you all remember but really um Several, several years ago, uh, we applied for a grant to create a, a butterfly uh, garden uh, in the creek, on the, along the creek bank, because the creek actually is an asset to uh, Fisher Park and Santiago Park, mm -hmm. it's an asset. Um, but because of the, uh, the undesirable activity we have, unfortunately, we had the, the fence had to go up to block access. You know? um, and I hope that's only a temporary measure actually get that removed at some point and then beautify the creek so it becomes an ass asset to Fisher Park. In fact, in fact, at Santiago Park, um, 
we got a grant to design the entrance from Main Street to the picnic area, uh, to the log cabin. And in that project, we're actually putting in um, a viewing decks so you can, you can look into the creek, uh, hoping that it will completely get beautified, the, the negative element will be eliminated. Hopefully Orange County Water District will, will release water down Santiago Creek. And if that happens, that creek will just blossom up into a beautiful asset uh, to Fisher Park and uh, Santiago Park. So I had a question um, for Lisa or Ron, sort of related to that. The, um, you know, the, the master plan agreement you guys are working on, is it possible that there could be additional um, amenities and facilities added to Jack Fisher Park as part of this? I know it's sort of globally for the city, but realistically, like, you know, could we start getting new amenities that we don't already have? Good question. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. That's what the process is, is about, is to hear what type of amenities you would like in your parks. Uh, you may not want some amenities in there, you may want more different amenities in there. And so uh, it is a possibility for sure. Yeah, and, and you'll let us know, you know, in plenty of time when you're looking for community input, because obviously yes. our, our board would love to jump on that and, and uh, we'll get the word out and, you know, we'll definitely have some input for that. So, yes, yeah. yeah. it's, it's kind of a weird shape. It's kind of, kind of like an inverted triangle, you know, it's a little bit more narrow at the front and then towards the back, it, it's just got this weird shape and it, it, it's kind of like this grass that goes to nowhere. <laughs> In the back. Yes, Ron Ono, my first, my first cut week on the job, he made me walk from Santiago to Fisher Park. And yeah. I, was, I was like, where am I going? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yes, it is uh, interesting. Just for an update, um, on Saturday morning, I was um, successful of the four homeless encampments that were on the county side of the park, just beyond Flower. Um, we were able to convince um, kind of an unsavory group, one unsavory group to leave. Um, and we were a little more forceful with a group of young folks that had syringes and were um, shooting up something into their arms. Um, and then the um, group that was lighting a fire, we took a picture of them and they left. So there is um, ongoing um, issues in the creek that continue. There's a few of us that live on River Lane um, near the park and we really try to take it amongst ourselves to split up that looking over the county side of it because it is I, the homeless population more recently seems to have figured out that that's not city property that's county property and one of the kids yelled at me that they moved there because they got chased out of by um, somewhere um, that was doing it so there still are issues down there I know everybody's working towards it we're trying to heal it as a community but it it, it still very much is something I wouldn't want children to be exposed to if they were walking along and going through there. And Paul, to, to sorry, Nancy, to just quickly address that, you know, I spoke with the sergeant that heads that leads the quality of life team, and he did let me know that because of COVID, the county's efforts, because as you just said, it's county property, the highway patrol really um, supervises that area. And because of COVID, they just kind of com completely backed off and said, hey, we're not going to do it anymore. We're not going to expose ourselves to that, but they are back on it now wow. and they should be doing it on a daily basis. And um, I know it's a high priority for them. And so it's something that they, um, on every shift, they are, they are doing their rounds. And so, oh, great. you know, Jesse, that makes sense because it was really cleaned up about a year ago, year, mm -hmm. year and a half ago. Yeah. And we weren't having it, anything, Nancy, you may remember. Oh, and yeah. Just more, you're right, it's been more the past six or seven months that yeah. we've seen activity again. We thought it was because the city was so effective in um, doing some work up near um, the, you know, the Discovery Tube that maybe they just moved. But anyway, yeah. absolutely, yeah. It's, it's been a short-term situation, I think. Good, good. I'm glad. And, and we'll stay, well, well, I'll stay in touch with them to make sure that, that they're still patrolling. Appreciate it. I will say that the folks that are there are, are good about leaving if you ask them. They're not really very confrontative. Oh, good, they're actually, good. You know, they, they, they get it. They're, they're people just trying to survive. But it's because we had that massive fire a year and a half ago that nearly took two of the homes down um, that everybody's just a little bit gun shy down there. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I thank you all for your feedback. We appreciate it. Uh, even though, you know, we understand what's happening in the parks, we want to make it better. Thank you for your patience, but um, we are committed. And so uh, you, can, you can count on us. We're trying our best. Uh, please reach out. Uh, Jeff Katz has reached out, a few others. Uh, so please feel free to. Um, and Aaron, I love your dog. And Mark, I love your cat. <laughs> In the picture. <laughs> Ron um, also and thank you everybody. Yeah, Ron and Lisa, thank you so much for coming on board um, and, and being part of our part of our meeting tonight. Uh, at this point, we'd like to open up the rest of the uh, agenda to any other open discussion about any other issues that you would like the board to maybe uh, visit or address. So, so if you've got an, anything else that you want to talk about or any other issues, uh, please feel free to chime in and raise your hand. Okay. Well, okay, great. Um, we really appreciate everybody's involvement tonight. We really appreciate your being on board. Once again, please reach out to um, any board member that you see here. Uh, you know, Paul and Les live over in the River Sharon Loop. Uh, Rick and myself and um, Salome, we live over here on the, the Acacia Jonquil uh, West Park Loop. And, uh, and Ryan. <coughs> Bella, they live over um, over on the memory lane loop. We would love to be available to you for any questions or concerns that you have. Um, we'd love to talk to you more about any ideas you have or any questions. Um, we'd love anybody's involvement. So thank you very much. If there's no uh, more, is there any? Yeah, and if, Je I'm sorry, Jesse. Thank you, Councilwoman Jesse. Sorry, I didn't mean to blow by you there. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on and introducing yourself and putting a face to a name. We really appreciate your being. We're going to stay in touch. You and I are going to be in touch a lot. So, so uh, the former city that I lived in, I kind of had a reputation for dog in the council. So, <laughs> so you'll be, you'll be hearing from me. I used to, you know, corner them in the store and kind of thing. So. Yeah. So if you go to Staters, she'll find you. <laughs> <No. laughs> so, uh, but at the previous city that I lived in, I actually I had a lot of interactive with the council because I was head of the library board for the city of Orange for 15, and she for grew 15, up with a lot for, of the for city 15 council. years. So, so um, you know, I love interacting with city staff. I love interacting with city council. So, um, so uh, buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> we're, thank you. I appreciate that, and uh, we're more than okay with that. And I just want to thank city staff personally. I'm really happy to hear about the parks master plan. Um, it's something that I'm looking forward to, and I have complete confidence in our staff that they're going to involve us at the point that we need to be involved. And so I'm just really excited for that. And thank I see you, there's staff. one staff member here on board who has been very quiet and just nodding her head the whole time. So Margarita, would you like to introduce yourself really quick? Yes, yes. <laughs> I've been listening attentively. So the Henninger Park meeting um, ended, so I decided to join. But yes, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Margarita Macedonio. I'm with the city's uh, neighborhood initiatives program. So um, we miss uh, Scott Cutner. We still miss him. Uh, we still talk to him and he's doing well. Um, but yes, uh, I'm Myself and Alyssa, who's been helping on the back end with the Zoom meetings, um, just please continue to count on us. Um, obviously, you have a great direct relationship with other city staff, but you know we can continue to support you when it comes to future um, neighborhood meetings, um, along with Daisy Perez from the city manager's office. We're all working together on, on a lot of projects. So, um, so yes, we're like very excited. Um, and it's, it's a great time to continue to be engaged with our neighborhoods and finding ways to improve on that. And congratulations on your turnout. It's great. Well, thank you very much for coming on board. And I just, I saw you over there nodding your head and I thought, well, we have to let her jump in and introduce herself. So thank you once again to all the city staff. If there are no more open discussion questions, I think I'd like to go ahead and call for adjournment and wish everybody a great Happy New Year. Um, our next general meeting will be in April, but please jump in whenever you need to. We do have, a, we have one more announcement. Uh, open, um, excuse me, Dumpster Day in Jack Fisher Park. We have Dumpster Day coming up on March 13th. So watch, uh, watch for future uh, information about which houses they will be at. We'll have dumpsters at three houses. And Paul, I see you waving your hand. You're waving your hand about something, right? 
You're still muted, sorry. So, so anyway, thank you to our board members that did participate. Thank you to all of our neighbors. Once again, one more time, please, please. If you see us out, you know, walking the dogs or, or walking by, please, you know, and stop and say, you know, I'm so-and-so and I, you know, I appreciate you guys being here. We really appreciate all the neighbors involvement and thank you very much um, for your participation. And we're going to go ahead and adjourn our meeting. Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.